So again, Cambridge 16, test 4. Reading passage 2. Changes in reading habits. So that's that's the reading passage, guys. Typical. Typically long. How many? Like 10 paragraphs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 paragraphs. And then looking at this, uh, this is um, multiple choice. And then uh, one word only. No, 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 no. Um, uh, matching type. And yes, no, not given. Typical, guys. Typical. Okay. All right. I think it's because I'm also tired. Okay. Maybe we should have a rest day for IELTS. What do you think? It's up to you, sir. Okay. Yeah, but the problem is you keep attending. So how can we have a rest day? Right? <laughs> you keep attending whether it's a Sunday or whether it's a Monday. You're always there. So what else can I do but to keep teaching? <laughs> sir, do you sleep? Pa? <laughs> uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes when there's nothing to watch but there's always something nice to watch <laughs> okay alright so again typically guys uh, we will not let's just have a loose time tracker 907 guys just a loose time tracker uh, but we cannot really time 20 minutes because this is a lesson right so changes in reading habits, what are the implications of the way we read today? It's quite interesting. So I think I want to do this first, right? Okay. Uh, we can also use that. But I think I want to, when I see first paragraph, guys, I think I want to do that first. Because the first paragraph gives you a general idea of the entire passage, right, guys? There, first paragraph, and then this one, studies on digital screen use. So we're looking for an main mangen, mangen. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, mangen and mangen. So she must be somewhere in the second page. There, there she is, guys. Uh, there's the study there. See? Studied. That's where the answer is. Do you follow, guys? This one is there. Easy peasy. Okay, let's begin with the first paragraph. So, iPad. I saw an iPad, guys. Oh, that's what Amy uses. Okay. Look around on your next plane trip. The iPad is the new pacifier for babies and toddlers. Oh, <laughs> what an expensive pacifier. Younger school age children read stories on smartphones. Older kids don't read at all, but hunch over video games. Parents and other passengers read on tablets or skim a flotilla of email and news feeds. Unbeknownst to most of us, an invisible game changing transformation links everyone in this picture. The neuronal circuit that underlines the brain's ability to read is subtly, rapidly changing. I like this, guys. And this has implications for everyone from the pre-reading toddler to the expert adult. So I want to find out what is the change in the neurons, right? The neuronal circuit. Okay, but let's answer that first. I like this passage. So A, our use of technology is having a hidden effect on us. B, technology can be used to help youngsters to read. C, travelers should be encouraged to use technology on planes. D, playing games is a more popular use of technology than reading. I think the answer is so obvious, right, guys? What's the answer? What's your answer? I think the answer is so obvious. It's A. 
I think all of these are just examples, right? That's just an example. That's just an example. That's just an example. But the topic sentence is really this one, the one in the end, right? And then all of them, all of the others were just examples. Okay. And then what main point does Sherry Turkle make about innovation? Let's look for Sherry Turkle. Where are you? Then? Okay. Okay, this is not a simple binary issue of print versus digital reading and technological innovation. Yeah, what's the difference? As MIT scholar Sherry Turkle has written, MIT guys, one of the top five in the world, Massachusetts mm -hmm. Institute of Technology. We do not err as a society when we innovate, but when we ignore what we disrupt or diminish while innovating, that's when we err. We err when we ignore what we disrupt or diminish while or diminish innovating. Uh, in this hinge moment between print and digital cultures, society needs to confront what is diminishing in the expert reading circuit. What our children and older students are not developing and what we can do about it. Okay, so, all right. What does she say about innovation? Is there another Sherry Turkle somewhere here? Okay, none other. So, technological innovation has led to a reduction in print reading. B, we should pay attention to what might be lost when innovation occurs. C, we should encourage more young people to be, be more involved in innovation. Does it say something like that? Mm -hmm. Young people to be not. There's a difference between developing products and developing it's ideas. Ooh, is there, a, is there a mention about that? There's a difference between developing products and developing ideas. Uh, I don't see anything about developing ideas. I think it's B. We should pay attention to what might be lost when innovation occurs. Do you agree, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, so sir. I think that's here. Mm -hmm. That's the one. That's the one, guys. We do not make a mistake when we innovate, but when we ignore what we disrupt or diminish what we while innovating that's when we make a mistake okay so so far guys this doesn't seem too difficult right okay oh my god we're skipping paragraphs guys i'm so worried okay <laughs> we'll jump to the fourth paragraph right away guys and then yeah. what is the writer making in the fourth paragraph that's the fourth paragraph Increasing reports from educators and from researchers in psychology and humanities bear this out. English literature scholar and teacher Mark Edmondson describes how many college students actively avoid the class literature of the 19th and 20th century in favor of something simpler as they no longer have the patience to read longer, denser, and more difficult texts. We should be less concerned with students' cognitive impatience, however, than what? By what may underlie it, the potential inability of large number of students to read with the level of critical analysis sufficient to comprehend the complexity of thought and argument found in more demanding texts. Whoa, I love it. So, for me, guys, that's the main point, right? So, more demanding text, like what? Contracts, what? Mm, research papers, you know. Right, guys? So, what is the writer making the fourth paragraph? Humans have an inborn ability to read and write. Wait, is this the fourth? First, second, third... Oh my God, I read the wrong paragraph, sorry. 
Okay, fourth paragraph. We know from research that the reading circuit, what's that? It's not given to human beings through a genetic blueprint like vision or language. Yeah, reading is not, uh, it's not inherent. It needs an environment to develop. Well, further, it will adapt to the environment's requirements from different writing systems to the characteristics of whatever medium is used. If the dominant medium advantages if the dominant medium advantages processes that are fast, multitask oriented, and well mm -hmm. for large mm -hmm. information like the current digital medium, so will the reading mm -hmm. circuit. As US UCLA psychologist mm -hmm. Patricia Greenfield writes, the result. Is that less attention and time will be allotted to slower, time demanding, deep reading processes. Okay, so what's the point? Uh, I think that's the point, guys, right? For me, that's the topic sentence right at the end. You think so, guys? You think so? For me. Humans have an inborn ability to read and write. Is that right? Is that right? No. No. No, sir. So. Okay. No. It's not given to you. Yeah. It's Persian. not a genetic blueprint like vision or language. Reading can be done using many different mediums. Uh, I don't think that's the main point, right, guys? The main idea, guys. Main mm. idea. The writing systems make unexpected demands in the brain. <laughs> Did it mention something like that? No. Did it? No. No, it didn't yeah. mention so. It didn't mention something like that. Some brain circuits are just to what is required of them. Um, okay. The result is that if the dominant advantages processes that are fast, blah, 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 so will the reading circuit. See, see, it will sure, adapt sir, to the environment's them. requirements mm -hmm. from different writing systems to the characteristic of whatever It will adapt to environment's requirements. Mm. So it looks like D, right, guys? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Then... And then this one, this one. Okay. There. So that's what he said. We will have difficulty comprehending the complexity of thought and argument found in more demanding texts. According to Mark Edmondson, the attitude of college students, where does it say? We avoid the classic literature of the 19th and 20th century in favor of something simpler. Okay, so is the way he teaches. I don't think it mentions that. Did it mention any change? Has influenced what they select to read. Let's read the rest. Does that worry him as much as it does others? Did it mention that? It didn't mention that. So. Okay. Does that match the views of the general public? Okay, I think I think I found the answer. The attitudes of college yeah, students. Uh, there, they avoid 19th and 20th century texts. There, so what's the answer, guys? This uh, has influenced what it's to read. Yeah, guys, nurses, did you have literature, literature in school? You didn't have literature in school, guys. You didn't? 
Yes, sir. <clears throat> no literature. You didn't? None? Mm. In nursing? I think in GE. I think in, in high school. I don't remember. Not in nursing? No literature in nursing? I remember mm. only Rizal. <laughs> Just Rizal. You mean Nolly yes, and Kaylee? Mm. I see. Apart from that, there's nothing. Mm, I see. Because, you know, literature is like critical thinking. I think you should have literature because your job involves critical thinking. Right, guys? What do you think? I mean, nursing involves critical <laughs> thinking. Right, guys? Yes, sir. Yeah, but we didn't have literature subjects. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't worry. I will uh, talk to... Uh, Sarah Dutep, <laughs> <laughs> the Secretary of Education. Okay, we're done. Oh, wait. We got to move to that study, guys. Let's go to the study and mangan. Okay. There have been major studies on digital screen news showing some blank trends. Okay. Multiple studies show that digital screen use may be causing a variety of troubling downstream effects. Effects. That's the answer. Okay. On reading comprehension in older high school and college students. Troubling, so, worrying. Um, what's the answer? What's the answer? It's there, guys. It's here. It's here. Um, what's the answer? What's the answer? Troubling. What's the answer? Troubling. What, what, what? What's the answer? Worrying. Worrying, do you agree? Worrying. Um, Worrying I'm because sure. of troubling. 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 Okay. Troubling downstream. Wait. Yeah. Why is it that but it's um, why why is it that like HR ah, hotel restaurant and hotel restaurant and tourism? Why do they have literature? Do they? Do they have literature? I'm not even sure. Don't know. Okay. Sir. <laughs> okay. I'll, talk, I'll talk to the Secretary of Education. <laughs> Psychologist Anne Mangan gave a high school students a short story to read, half using digital and half using print mediums. Her team then used a question and answer technique to find out how blank each group's understanding of the plot was. She gave them a true false not given questionnaire. <laughs> true false <are> not given. <laughs> okay. From Norway. Study how high school students comprehend the same material in different mediums. Mangan's group has some questions about a short story whose plot had universal student appeal. Half of the students read the story on a tablet, the other half in paperback. Results indicated that students who read on print were superior. Why, Kaya? Their comprehension, comprehension. reading peers, particularly in their ability to sequence yeah. detail and reconstruct the plot in chronological exactly. order. I want to find out the explanation for that. Her, her, team, her, her team then used a question okay. and answer to find out how blank each group's understanding of the plot was. Yes. Mm. Uh, studied how high school students comprehend the same material in different mediums. That's the one, right, guys? There, there, there. Okay. How high school students comprehend, comprehend the same material the same material in different mm. mediums. What's the answer? To find out how blank each group's understanding. What's the answer? This one came out already. Um, how hard? Um, how fast? Is it fast? Toro. How Toro? Why Toro? Um, how high, how high school, school students, students comprehend the same material? 
Same with you. Understand. There's no understand. Uh, because how blank each group's understanding, how fast each group's understand. It's I don't think it's fast, right? Uh, hard. How hard each group's understanding? No, no, no. Toro. It looks like Toro, right, guys? Toro. Toro. Each group's understanding of the plot was. Toro. Okay. And then the finding showed the clear pattern in the responses with those who read. Screens finding the order of information. Screens are hard. Hard to recall. But to, to sequence detail and reconstruct the plot. What? Hard. To read. Hard to recall. To read screens. What do you think? Hard. Hard to recall. Many to recall, past to recall. Hard. I think we, just by going by the grammar, right? Yes. Hard. Hard. To recall. Okay. All right. Those then we're going please. to zooming you. Okay. Zooming. Students are tending to read blank words and phrases in a text to save time. Okay. Zooming, zooming you. Um, San Jose State University has conducted a series of studies which indicate that the new norm in reading is <laughs> involving mm. word spotting and browsing through the text. Many readers now use a pattern when reading in which they sample the first line and then word spot through the, rest of the text. When the reading brain skims like this, it reduces time allocated to deep reading processes okay in other words we don't have time to grasp complexity okay to understand another's feelings to perceive beauty and to create thoughts of the readers okay are tending to read black words uh, what up and down. It's either many, many or many isolated, or. right? Or combined. Combined. Combined words. Isolated, sir. Or the spotting. In, involving word spotting. There. So that is isolated words, right? Right, guys? Not combined. Combined. Example the first line and then word spot there. Word spot. Right, guys? Word spot. That's what we do, right, guys? We word yes. spot and then we read in detail. Do you follow? That's essentially that's what we do, right? Like we look for Anne Langen and then we look for Jimmy Liu. This is the reader. What's the answer? Combined? Isolated, sir. Isolated words. Okay. This approach, he says, gives the reader a superficial understanding of the blank content of the material. Combined. Oh, time to grasp complexity. Mm -hmm. To un understand feelings, to perceive beauty. Uh, what content? Leaving no Combined. time for thought. Uh, to understand another's feelings. Reader, a superficial understanding of the blank content. Oh, wait, we already have isolated, right? Isolated came out yes. already. Why do we have... Wait, D, H... Okay, F, B. We only have four choices, guys. Superficial <laughs> understanding of the... Another's feelings, sir. What do you think? See? Emotional. To understand another's feelings. Emotional. Emotional. Right? So, there. Leaving no time for thought. Emotional. Understanding of the combined content. 
could it be combined? Mm, I think it can be combined, but emotional. Understand rapid. another's feelings, sir. We don't have the time to grasp complexity. Where's combined? To understand, to perceive beauty. No, uh, I don't see combined. Right? Emotional. Right, right, right. Emotional. Okay. And then, okay. Uh, all right. Then let's now go into, we haven't read one paragraph, guys, like B. Okay. The medium we use to read can affect the choice of reading content. Where does that say? Uh -huh. uh, medium we use to read. Next word, spot. This is skimming, guys. The medium. Ooh. Guys, I'll just read this. I'm interested in this. As work in neurosciences indicates, the acquisition of literacy necessitated a new circuit in our species brain. Wow! Oh my God, man! We evolved a new circuit more than 6,000 years ago. That circuit evolved from a very simple mechanism for decoding basic information, like the number of goats in one's herd, to the present highly elaborated reading brain. My research depicts how the present reading brain enables the development of some of our most important intellectual and affective processes. Okay. Uh, enables the development of some of our most important intellectual and affective processes. Internalized knowledge, analogical reasoning, inference, yeah, inference, perspective taking, looking at the perspective, empathy, critical analysis, and the generation of insight. Oh my God, man. Uh, guys, do we have a question in the speaking for reading? Do we? Do we? Is there a question on reading that came out in the in the speaking reviewer? But is there none? There's none, guys. Our, there isn't uh, singing only cooking. There's none on reading. Oh, I would have wanted to use those words. <laughs> Research surfacing in many parts of the world now cautions that each of these essential deep reading processes may be under threat as we move into digi digital based modes of reading. Okay. The guys, I think I saw that somewhere here. The medium we use affect our choice of content. Uh -huh. Uh, where is it? Is it this one? The environment. So it's hard to find, guys. The keyword is so hard to find. We know from research that the reading circuit is not given to human beings through a genetic vision. It needs an environment to develop. Further, it will adapt to the environment's requirements. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. If the dominant medium advantages processes that are multitask, like the current digital medium, medium, so will the reading circuit. That's I think that's the one. The medium we use to read can affect our choices. Correct? Oh, maybe it's this one, guys. This one. My 19th, 20th century. How many college students actively avoid the classic literature of the 1920s of something simpler? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, guys, it's hard to find, right? So let's try to look for the other one first. And then the answer to this one must be earlier. Okay, guys, this is challenging us. Mm -hmm. Some age groups are more likely to lose their complex reading skills than others. That's the one, right? That's the one, guys. 
isn't that the one? In increasing reports from educators and from researchers in a um, um, bear this out. English literature scholar and teacher describes how many college so students actively, actively avoid. So that's the yeah, some age six. groups, right? Yes. That's the one, guys. Some age groups. You agree? More likely to lose their context. Some age groups. Does it mention? Oh, the, it also mentions high school students. High school students. Mm. Uh, also the same, right? Uh, they also lost their deep comprehension skills. Are more likely to lose their than others. Oh my God, guys, let's find that. Uh, Mangin's group as subject blah 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 results indicate that the students who read and print were superior in their comprehension to screen reading peers particularly in their ability to sequence detail blah 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 are more likely to lose their complex reading skills than others multiple studies show that digital screen use may be causing a variety of troubling downstream effects on reading comprehension in older high school and college students. Is that the one, guys? Yes. That's the one. Reading comprehension in older high school and college older students. Older high school and college students. Right, guys? Yes. Guys, I think even if we, we're not sure of the answer, I, th I think we should just... Because it's very hard to detect a pattern without any answer, right? So let's begin with the yes, okay. Then false information has become more widespread in, I don't see any false information, guys. Mm. Hang on, guys. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, where is, uh, uh, guys, we gotta read this last two. The possibility that critical analysis, empathy, and other deep reading processes could become unintended collateral damage for digital culture is not a straightforward binary issue about your print versus digital reading. It is about how we have all begun to read to various mediums and how that changes not only what we read, but also the purposes for which we read. Oh my God, guys, that's, that's the 23, one. Sir. That's the one. <laughs> so the medium we used to read can affect. We use, we, the medium we used to read yes. can affect our choice of content. Of reading content. But also the purposes. It changes reading. not only what we read. That's okay, the content, that's right? Just... The, the purpose, sir, we read. read the context. But also the, the purposes for which we But also read. the purpose. So it's a yes. And then some age groups are more likely to lose. Let's read some more. Nor is it only about the young. Ah, that's the one, guys. The subtle atrophy of critical analysis and empathy affects us all equally. So what's the answer here? Yeah. What's the answer. <laughs> what's the answer? It's false, sir. It's a uh, no. Okay. And then false information. It affects our ability to navigate a constant bombardment of information. It incentivizes a retreat to the most familiar stories of unchecked information, which require and receive no analysis, leaving us susceptible to false information and irrational ideas. So, has become more widespread. Has become more widespread. What do you think, guys? <laughs> susceptible to false information. We are susceptible yeah. to false information, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Susceptible but to false information. But it doesn't say the widespread. Doesn't say it's widespread. Spread. What do you no. think? 
There isn't. There is an actual version. Okay. And I wonder some people believe like uh, in the states. I mean, some of the theories are so wacko, man. Ah, uh, people believe that theory wacko. Yeah, like for example about COVID, right? Yes. Yeah, sure. What wacko believes? Where did you read that? We still have opportunity to rectify the problems that technology is presenting. There's an age who holds neuroscience that does not alter with age. Use it Is it or right? lose it. It's a very hopeful principle when applied to critical thought in the reading brain because it implies choice. The story of the changing reading brain is hardly finished. Okay. We possess both the science and the technology to identify and re redress the changes in how we the changes before they become and changed. If we work to understand exactly what we will lose alongside the extraordinary new capacities that the digital world has brought us. So there is as much reason for excitement as caution. Caution. Okay. Rectify. So we, we, we should be excited and at the same time we should also be cautious. Okay, like, dude, you believe that? Wacko, man. God, when did you hear that from a blogger? Oh my God. <laughs> we still have opportunities to rectify. So what's the answer? Yes. It's a yes. I love this guy. So let's check it, guys. Let's check it out. Oh my God, we were supposed Perfect. to finish by 27 and then we're we're about to hit 40 minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. I'm so confident we didn't make a mistake. I see. See, see, see. Uh, where is the answer key? Is it below this, guys? It's below that, right? This is test four, correct? Test four. Test one. Okay. You know, guys, I don't think the reading passage answered. What's wrong with reading from a tablet? Right, guys? I don't think it really answered that question. Right, guys? What do you think? Masakit sa mata, sir. Oh, it hurts. Okay, yeah. No, that's not the one. Where is it? 26, sir. Yeah. Okay na yun, sir. Tama na. Okay, yes. No, not And then... C. That's perfect. B. F. H. D. Okay. And then A, B, D, B. Okay, guys. Uh, but I think I like okay. that part where so we got it perfect. Okay, boring. <laughs> yeah. so I like that part, guys, where we couldn't find the true false not given right. We couldn't find it. We were looking so many places, right? We were looking here. And then we realized that there we haven't read B yet, so we had to read that. And then we haven't read these last two paragraphs. It turns out that the answers were just there. Right, guys? Okay. So I guess, you know, highlighting really helps, right? Uh, it, you know, uh, by the way, that's the only thing that you can do in the computer delivered test. You can just highlight. There's no underlining, you know. Just highlighting. Okay. It's a bad nine. But uh, to be honest, I was quite expecting some scientific explanation of what it does to us based on, you know, uh, new 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 neuro studies something like that you know like uh like uh neurons or uh, the frontal lobe or whatever stuff like that okay all right but uh essentially what we just learned is that it forces us 
to avoid deep reading. That's just it, right, guys? In a nutshell. Mm -hmm. There. So, uh, in a way, there's nothing really wrong, right? I just have to read deeper. <laughs> right, guys? And then if it hurts your eyes, then maybe you should, like, adjust the whatever. Uh, I mean, the glare or wear glasses or whatever. Right, guys? You follow? Oh. Okay, but I love the part, right, about, you know, deep dive. Where is it, guys? I want to remember those. Where is it, the deep dive? Where is it? Where is it? These fancy words. We don't have it's time. It's another nine. Grasp. It's another nine. We don't have time to grasp complexity, <laughs> to understand another's feelings, to perceive beauty, to create thoughts of the reader's own. Where are the others, guys? The subtle atrophy of critical analysis. Um, where, where, where was the other one, guys? Where was the other one? About reading. Um, where is it? Susceptible to first information, irrational something, sir. Is that it? Uh, or to create thorough thoughts. Oh, what about this? Uh, it's comprehension to screen reading peers. The ability to sequence detail <laughs> to reconstruct the plot. Reconstruct the plot. Okay. Order. Uh, critical analysis. The complexity of thought and argument found in more demanding texts. Uh, the atrophy of critical analysis. Empathy. Okay, it incentivizes the retreat to unchecked information, which require no analysis, leaving us susceptible to false information. Okay. All right, I'm just remembering those words, guys. Uh, complexity of thought. Okay. Uh, the atrophy of logic. <laughs> Okay, all of the I love the way I love the way the writing is, guys. Right, I love the way it's written. I appreciate those kinds of writing. Okay, like uh, that's what you call a deep dive, right? We're looking at the words. How did they phrase it, right, guys? Their word spotting and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm sure you're now. Inspired to do your own reading. Yeah, hey, because we just talked about changes in reading habits. <laughs> okay, stopping the recording, guys, for a while for your questions. Hold on.